The big news early on day two was Eddie Bell in production two-wheel drive eight seconds quicker than the Porsche of Martin Dippy through the opening yump stage. But that's where the good news ended. Off the road, very next stage, handing the class lead to Dippy, who was now dialed in after his chat with the boys in Stuttgart. Jerry Fryer moved up two places outright, third in class by lunchtime in Fongamamona. JT and Lizzie Thompson normally fly under the radar, but in two days they've filled out as many temporary stage withdrawals. Yesterday, a blowing turbo forced a retreat to Auckland for motor out and repair. And this morning, a moment at the Yumps brought more enforced time in service. We missed the notes on one and uh, did a very significant landing and all of a sudden we, uh, we had zero uh, power steering and we kind of knew what that was. It had shredded the main serpentine belt and uh, as a consequence uh, we, uh, we had to sort of limp home with Armstrong steering. Marcus van Klink made lunch after posting good times through the first two stages, but the RX-8 dropped the ring gear off the flywheel, forcing a push out of final control and some fast thinking about getting out of there for the final stage back to a much needed service. In Classic, Mark KB still hadn't been awarded his time back for stopping in stage yesterday, but he powered on through the field, lifting from sixth to third by the lunch stop. That was also helped by the retirement of Tony Butler when the rear suspension in the Cheetah collapsed. Mechanical troubles are an occupational hazard of classic cars and Mark Hallier found himself still dealing with alternator charging issues from day one. Yeah, we've, we've only get one stage out of a battery, so we've got three batteries. It's an electric car, they're, they're stropped into the, underneath the bonnet and between each stage we'll change the leads from one battery to the next to get through the stages. So this is your bit about going green, is it? Uh, yeah, absolutely, you know, it's an electrified Porsche now. Graham Drummond found himself leading production four-wheel drive after a couple of the front runners eliminated themselves, but he was pleased to be in Fonga. And unfortunately some of our rivals um, had offs and things like that, that um, pretty much make it very hard for them to come back from. So yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's five days. Mind you, almost unbelievably, Andy Oakley had rebuilt the front of his damaged RS5 overnight in Auckland and then rejoined for the run into lunch. At the pointy end being dominated by Glenn Inkster, well, he continued to streak away from the field. Lee Hopper celebrating the midday finish after flying across the jumps. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, we took that first jump a bit, a bit, uh, a bit too fast, I think. Apparently, it's got a bit of a nasty kick if you do it that way. <laughs> as we found out, kicked the back right up in the air and came down, and as you can see, uh, that's the result. And Nick Deval had his own issues, but his were at the other end of the car. It started off with the uh, centre diff, which uh, works the two-wheel and four-wheel drive of the car. That broke, and uh, so we went into two-wheel drive mode. And of course, with all the horsepower, the car was just oversteering all the time. And eventually, I got around the corner, went in too fast, oversteered, and I hit a, a wooden railing. So that bent the rear suspension, so we lost a bit more time, but we're still going. The juxtaposition of old classic machinery and modern electronic technology is never better illustrated than the entry of Grant Dalton. The CEO of one of the world's most advanced yachting organisations is here in a classic old Mark I Ford Escort. Why you ask? Simple. Well there's a couple of reasons for that really. First of all, as uh, you probably worked out, I'm not 25. So, so it's my era and, and I, in my motorbikes I had a lot of motorbikes of that era, that sort of 73 era, so it's, it's kind of that Mark 1. It's the car you always wanted when you were at school but there's no way you were ever going to have one. Uh, so, so there's that about it and, and there's such a, a legendary car. So I guess it's a mix of my job which is, you know, as you say, a very high technology job. I'm not the technology, I can barely do email, it's the guys that work for me that are that. But then, you know, where I came from and, and my love as a kid and uh, to be able to, you know, and, and you know, Neil's so amazing and the car's so well sorted um, 
to, to, to be able to drive his car is, you know, is a real honour. The road out of Fonga Mamona was the last stage of day two, and Hayden McKenzie delivered himself a 22 second advantage over our race leader. We're taking it nice and gentle. We've got everything to lose crashing in there. It's uh, very wet in the beginning. We're running all the tires, lighter weight car, so we don't get the heat in the tires. And so, uh, yeah, we just took it nice. I was uh, talking Glenn down a lot. We had one, one, one near near slide in there, but it was, it was okay. So we slowed down a bit more. The last third was dry again, so we picked it up. But, yep, we're very happy with that. We're trying to be professional. And Mike Tubbs redeemed himself after yesterday, snatching the two-wheel drive win by seven-tenths of a second over Martin Dippy. The fight between the German manufacturers is set to continue.